All right, in the interest of time, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Good afternoon to you all. My name is Jeanette Haregi, and I'd like to welcome you to the Ventura County Area Agency on Aging Seminars on Brain Health and Wellness. The seminars are a series of informational presentations designed to provide critical resources to Ventura County residents living with a dementia-related disease and their caregivers. We are excited to welcome all Ventura County residents who are interested in learning more about navigating local services targeted at optimizing quality of life. The seminars on brain health and wellness were inspired by the VCAAA's Advisory Council's commitment to making critical resources more accessible to older adults, people with disabilities, and caregivers. Here to, here to introduce today's presentation is Lynette Harvey, Clinical Services Director for the Camrail Healthcare District and member of the VCAAA Advisory Council. Lynette, I will pass it along to you. Thank you, Jeanette. I get the pleasure of introducing our esteemed speakers today and to bring a breadth of knowledge to the subject matter of adult day programs. Um, first, I'd like to introduce Martha Shapiro. Martha is the Director of Programs for Senior Concerns. In this role, Martha oversees the Adult Day Program, the Caregiver Support Center, and the Senior Advocate Program. She ensures that the programs run smoothly day to day and that every participant is treated with dignity and respect to maximize their quality of life. Martha brings to this role a, a background in older adult services and caregiver support. She earned her master's degree in social welfare from UCLA and currently holds her license in clinical social, social work. Martha serves on many community committees, including the Ventura County Area Agency on Aging Advisory Council, the LGBT Aging Coalition of Ventura County, the Ventura County Compassionate Care Coalition, and the Dementia Care Network. Martha also writes a weekly column for the Ventura County Star newspaper, which I saw yesterday in the paper and was really good on the difference between home health care and in-home in care. So go and take a look at that when you get a chance. I also want to introduce Katie Kroll. Katie is the administrator at the Oxnard Family Circle Adult Day Healthcare. She's been with the company since January of 2003. Besides running the Oxnard Family Circle, Katie's involved with many community projects in Ventura County. She works with the Fall Prevention Forum, the Alzheimer's Association, the Disabled American Veterans, and the Ventura County Coalition for Compassionate Care. For several years now, Katie's been involved in the development of a stimulating program called BrainMax which is focused on brain health through self-health management, a brain-boosting diet, mental and physical exercises and music. I think that sounds really interesting too. So uh, take it away, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us today. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and share our presentation. So we are speaking today um, about expanding the options for seniors and family caregivers. And oops, I have to switch my display, I'm sorry. Does that look better? Yes. Good, okay. Um, so that's going to focus today on adult day and adult day healthcare programs because that is an amazing option for family caregivers. Um, so I start with this slide. Old age is the most unexpected of all things that can happen to a man. Um, and yet we're grateful if it does, but we're often unprepared. We know that 80% of seniors prefer to age in place, but what if? There are so many what ifs. 80% of people today that have a dementia diagnosis are cared for in the community. So why do so many people prefer to stay at home? Well, I mean, for one, we know facility care is quite expensive. Um, spouses often are still together and they don't wanna separate from each other and that senior was still really enjoys the benefits of the home environment, um, perhaps with their pets or um, the familiar surroundings of their home. And they might have to sell the home if they move and most people don't want to do that. But when you're caring for someone at home, it really takes a toll on that family caregiver. And so we often refer to them as the invisible second patient. 
Um, they're often invisible because that's not who we're talking about. We're talking about the identified patient, but that family caregiver in the background is the one doing it all and making sure it all happens. And so it takes a toll emotionally. Um, we see stress, anger coming out, frustration. Um, and most of the time, the family caregiver doesn't recognize it until somebody points it out to them. We see it takes a toll physically on them, um, exhaustion, they might not be sleeping well, they might have other health problems and all of that can cause a lack of concentration. I know when I speak with family caregivers, so many of them have postponed their own well care doctor visits because of their caregiving responsibilities. So they're not maintaining their own health. And then it can become very isolating. They might not feel as comfortable taking their loved one out or joining in on the activities that they used to, or they might not be able to. But we need this caregiver. That person is so critical to the quality of life of the care recipient. So we have to wrap around and take care of that family caregiver. So this slide sort of shows the options that are available for support. Um, the one on the left is kind of the idea of um, facility care, placing your loved one into a uh, facility, a memory care or a boarding care home. The top picture might be bringing in a, a home care worker, a caregiver to come into the home and give you as the caregiver some relief while they provide some assistance to your loved one. Um, but the third option that doesn't get talked about often enough is the one you're seeing on the bottom, and that's an adult daycare program. That is a social group environment that's just there during the day for your loved one. It sort of combines the idea of having a caregiver at home with facility care, where they come together, they get to enjoy group activities and social time, giving that family caregiver a break but then they still go home to their regular bed at night. And that's what we are talking about today. So an adult day program is a professional care setting. It's a licensed care setting where older adults, so people with dementia or other disabilities can come and receive therapeutic, social, nutritional services for some part of the day. They get to have that that social group environment, have conversations with different people, and then the caregivers are there leading the program. So this is a clean, comfortable, supervised setting. Um, supervision is so important. Most of the participants have some level of cognitive impairment. It also really increases the social interactions. Um, they get to enjoy being social with the other people in the group. And then also these programs often bring in visiting pets or visiting children's groups or volunteers. Um, so they really get to be a part of a community during the day. And we see what an amazing benefit that is when people are cared for at home, oftentimes they get much more isolated. And so when they come and they start to join a program like this, it might lead them to lift some depression and suddenly be talking more um, and be more animated throughout the day, which guess what also makes them more tired at night. So there's an added benefit. Mm -hmm. These programs also stress exercise. They, they include an exercise component to keep the person strong. And probably most importantly, they provide a sense of purpose and a place to belong. I know we had one person attending our day program who was um, pretty far progressed with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, but when she would go home at the end of the day, she would tell her family what a good day at work she had. And I felt that that was a huge success because she felt like she did when she had a career, that she was important and valued and had a place to go and do something productive during the day. These programs also provide nutritionally balanced meals and in a group environment. So sometimes people that are having trouble eating at home will suddenly eat more because they're at a table full of people eating. And so they follow those social graces and they follow along and they eat more. And they are full of meaningful activities that bring pleasure and enjoyment. 
And the programs really gear those activities to be therapeutic in movement and art and um, music and uh, brain stimulating activities, trivia, word games. So it really keeps people going. And then of course, there's those added benefits to the family caregiver. Um, it gets to reduce some of their stress and it helps the family cope better as well. Um, it reduces the risk of abuse and neglect. Even the most well-meaning caregivers can become burnt out and frustrated. And so if we don't provide them some relief, they can um, become neglectful or abusive towards their loved one. And it gives the families time to stay involved in their community. And Katie and I are gonna show some stories about how some of our family caregivers were able to use that time of respite to really take care of themselves. So Katie, I'll let you share this story. Sure. Well, this is a story of a lady who all her life was working in, um, in a university, university, and she was busy. She always been admired by her students, a uh, very well-known professor. And then um, the crisis happened. Her husband was diagnosed with Alzheimer. And she described to us and wrote the amazing story how her life, as she wrote, shrink to the um, life of her husband who would become forgetful, confused, frustrated, uh, saying inappropriate things. And that's what she write, writes. Just as my husband's world is shrinking and changing, so is my world. world. She um, told us stories how, um, how, her, how active her life was, how she was meeting with her friends, all the events she was doing while she was teaching and how that fulfilling life suddenly turned to almost, almost isolated life, just because as uh, she says, there was everything focused on her husband and she didn't even have a meaningful conversation during the day once, just because there was no interaction outside and she became more depressed, more isolated until, um, until she decided just to change her life and to, as she writes, to, real, to realize her own identity and um, how she turned her life of a caregiver, which was constantly focused on filling forms, making doctor appointments, chauffeuring her husband to his appointments, administering medication, ordering medication, reading everything she could about Alzheimer's, attending support groups, uh, making sure that the meals, laundry, all those things are uh, done efficiently to support the husband's needs. And of course, it definitely, definitely affected her health and mental status. And then uh, she told us how much her life changed when uh, her husband started attending a dull day program, how it made her life different, how it made her think about herself, about her own uh, interests, um, walks. Uh, and she wrote a little, little line saying, just to walk with her dog. <laughs> she said, there was a world without Alzheimer. Because as Martha mentioned, a lot of time caregivers of those um, people who have compromised memory, they are affected the most just because they have to care of someone who can't really talk uh, or describe or really uh, let people know what they need are. And that puts double stress and double pressure on the caregivers just because they have to think for their loved one, guess why the mood is changing, guess what happened, is there a pain and ache and the loved one can't explain, but at the same time, suddenly become restless or anxious. So, and the, the life uh, which is focused on their loved one and they trying to help and guess and predict the behavior, that's what makes quite often 
uh, quite often the most stressful, uh, uh, the most stressful part of their caregiving. Yeah, we can go on, Martin. Yeah, I mean, slide. I think so many caregivers can relate to that, to feeling that they're losing their identity. Um, and so this gives them an opportunity to be able to reclaim themselves. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, one of the, the families that we work with here at Senior Concerns, um, the husband started the day program and uh, the wife wrote me this email and it just meant so much to me. She said, you know, the gift you're giving me, you handle these things, meaning we take care of her husband so that I can walk and I can breathe while I'm walking and I can walk and I can breathe and I can refuel so that when I'm back at caregiving at 2 p.m., I'm doing so in a loving way for my husband. And I just think that really captures how people feel. Um, she had tried care in the home, but she often felt that she had to sort of micromanage it. Um, she might not have needed to, but that's how she felt, right? Because it was right there in her own home. So she was still very involved. And when she started the, her husband attending the day program where she could drop him off and then she would go to the park and take walks by herself, um, it really changed things for her because she finally felt like she could breathe again, that she could trust him in our care and have that time to herself because she couldn't stay and oversee everything. It just wasn't even an option. Um, so we were able to, to give her that break. There is a picture of a uh, continuation of the story our caregiver wrote to us and uh, she named the story uh, Walking with my dog Sunshine. So, and that she writes, uh, that how that mental stress of caregiving and um, life where she connected with the outside world, how it changed her life. And uh, as she writes, um, that she was able to put aside the responsibilities of caregiving and just enjoy the interaction with others. And she writes that in those few minutes, there is no Alzheimer's, plenty of smiles and small talk. Yes, caregiving is a hard work in places like Oxnard Family Circle. The husband was our participant, giving me the caregiver time to reconnect with my identity. Sunshine walks are daily rituals to keep me connected to a world outside of Alzheimer's disease. This is the priceless, uh, priceless um, letter, which makes all of us who work with the people who diagnose with Alzheimer uh, huge appreciation of how much our work means to these caregivers, to the people who need us the most. And again, as Martha said, those are the people most affected by their loved one uh, condition. And those are unpaid caregivers who can't really do anything to get away um, from this commitment. That's their life and that's their priority in life to help their loved one. And just to add a little story uh, to Martha's uh, story about uh, her participant uh, who became more uh, open, more talkative. Uh, same thing happened to our participant when he started coming home from our program. He couldn't remember what he had uh, for his lunch, but he remembered what songs uh, they sang. And the daughter first was alarmed because she thought that there is hallucinations. It's impossible that he would remember those things, but he did. And when she called us, yes, we confirmed that that's exactly uh, what kind of program it was uh, during the music hour. And she was amazed how much the life of her father changed when he started attending the programs where, where uh, he could socialize with others, do the things he loved before and how much it affected uh, his mental state and his memory. It didn't cure him, but it made his life so much more fulfilled. Absolutely, that's beautiful. And one other thing this made me think of is, um, you know, one of the benefits of having this care outside of the home 
Um, oftentimes when it's a spouse, a husband wife relationship, um, I will ask the spouse, when was the last time you had the house all to yourself? And oftentimes they're saying, I don't know, maybe five years. I mean, they've been right. you know, attached um, uh, during all of that caregiving time. So it's sometimes an unexpected benefit that they forget how amazing it is to have the house all to themselves to do whatever they want and not have somebody, you know, checking on them or asking questions. So Absolutely. another benefit. <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. So we have two different types of programs and this is what both Katie and I run one of each. Um, so you're getting the benefit of, of learning from both of us today. So I um, run at Senior Concerns, the adult day program, that's the social model and it's licensed by the California Department of Social Services. So it's sort of funny that we have two similar programs, but they're licensed um, as completely different models of programs. Um, and Camarillo Healthcare District in Camarillo is another one of these social model programs. And Katie? Right, and our program is called Adult Day Healthcare, and we are licensed by Department of Public Health. That's a medical model. And the bonus uh, of this model is that we have full clinical staff. We have nursing staff, we have rehab staff, physical occupational therapies, speech therapies, dietitian. Uh, we have, besides nursing staff, we have full social work uh, crew. And these people provide all type of services to help with resources. Uh, for our participants and nurses, of course, provide all the care which is ordered by the doc doctor. So whatever nurses do elsewhere, they do in our facility. It could be injections, you know, administration, catheters, you name it. Whatever doctor orders our nursing staff, um, care plans and administers. That's the difference between our program and the social um, social model program. Absolutely. So this slide, while it's a little bit busy, kind of explains some of that. But I will say, um, depending on your loved one's needs, the best thing, um, well, I'll let Katie talk about funding, but separate from funding, if you're just looking for the program, is to really just explain your loved one's needs. Um, because even some of the social model programs can still provide a lot of the care that you're looking for. Sure. The adult day health program, those that are licensed by Department of Public Health, they have a little bit more of a funding because uh, state Medicaid, which in California called Medi-Cal, covers this care. Uh, another funding source, it could be long-term care insurance, it could be Veterans Administration, uh, private fees, Regional centers cover the cost uh, for their uh, clients, and of course, uh, community donations too. The difference again between adult day program and adult day health, as it's as this slide shows, it has the required of uh, certain services like nursing, like social work, like um, uh, physical therapies, rehab, mental services mental health services, all these services, transportation, all these services are uh, required, mandated here, our license. Yes, absolutely. And I'll just add um, that, for example, in adult day care social model, we do not provide physical or occupational therapy. Um, but in the past, we've had participants that were receiving that through home health care while they were attending our program. And if it was more convenient for the family, they could have the visiting um, physical therapy while they were at our program. It's just not provided by us. The easiest way to find a center near you is uh, to go on websites, on the social service website, uh, Tri County Regional Center and Department of Aging. Also, you can call Martha or I, any of other centers around you, Camarillo Healthcare District, and all these um, 
resources would be provided uh, to you by the social workers. So anyone who answered the call can transfer a call to a person who can help scheduling a tour and explaining more about the program for everyone to determine what is the most appropriate place for their loved ones. How we select uh, if the program is right for you. Of course, the best way is to go and visit. Uh, tours could be scheduled and um, th th their staff, which is uh, working for the center, would give it a tour. Um, I'm sure that the tours are tours could be as long as needed to answer all the questions and most of the questions are listed the most common questions that are listed on this slide are answered by the um, facility the one which provides tours people ask about staff to client ratio how the people with compromised memory are cared for for many it's a key question only because they feel how difficult it is to work with people um, with dementia, Alzheimer, and they're worried and sometimes too worried. What if we uh, can't really determine what their loved one need? How can we uh, how can we work with someone who is anxious and restless? And we explain what we do because we're all 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 uh, professionals and we do work with Alzheimer's Association and are very, very educated on this subject. And also questions are how people communicate, how these centers communicate with the physician in case of emergency. And we do have, all of us have special um, vehicles to communicate with the physicians. So we have information, we have releases of information signed by the family. So in case of emergency, we can always communicate with the doctor or we have other protocols for emergency, uh, staff can explain to you what kind of activities centers offered while you're at the center. You can see these uh, activities. Uh, we explain about assessments, how the assessments are done to write an appropriate care plan for their loved ones, so centered care plan. And we explain what kind of paperwork is required for enrollment. It's also very, very important. So the best way to select the right program is, of course, schedule a tour. And also, the uh, a lot of uh, time information could be given over the phone if needed on the websites too. Definitely. And one thing I'll say is we all want the right fit in the program. That's true. That's um, true. You know, I think families might worry that we're just going to accept their loved one, even if it's you know, we can't manage their needs, but that really doesn't help us. Um, we want a program where people can engage and enjoy the group environment because that's really the goal of this type of program. Absolutely, absolutely. That's very important. We wouldn't take anyone who would be above our level of care. And often we receive calls from Martha Place or Camaria Health when they understand that, that a very, very um, complicated let's say diabetes care is would be only admin, administered by a registered nurse. So that person is more appropriate for our setting. And at the same time, us, we sometimes suggest people to go and check these two places just because the social model program could be more appropriate just because it's uh, less restrictive toward diets or other things. So those things could be often benefit to a person. Yes, and one thing I didn't even think to put is hours and transportation, right? Because right. I know now um, since the pandemic, our hours here at Senior Concerns are shorter than they were before. So we're open four hours a day. Um, so it might be that somebody needs a longer day based on their schedule or they need the transportation included as part of that. So there's a lot that goes into selecting the right program and, and we're all really able and happy to talk that through with anybody. That is correct. Now the fun part, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the fun part, the COVID precautions. Most of the people who tour us really, really, really worry about COVID and the infection control. Why? Because nowadays people are really 
worrying to bring their loved one to a um, congregate setting of care, and then that person could be exposed to an infection. So to kind of ease this worry, I can personally say that the precautions we take so far, and we are open for over a year to congregated settings. So when pandemic started, we provided alternative care, meaning that we were doing doorstep services. We were sending meals and still do. Uh, we were sending our staff, therapists and nurses to the doorstep of the participants. Buses were uh, um, equipped with all the, uh, with everything nurses, nursing room needs or gym needs to provide care at the doorstep. Now from Jan June 1st, 2021, we return to congregate setting. And of course, everyone is interested, how is that working out? We've been really, really worried uh, how, how it's gonna work, considering that the COVID is still in our lives, big time. So after a whole year, I have very good feeling about that. Although there were people who tested positive here and there, yet there were no outbreaks inside the center. So if that person attended the program, we tested people who were around him for 10 to 14 days, depending on condition, and no one else tested positive staff or participants who were around that person. And we uh, could trace where that person walked. We have cameras, so it's easy for us. So, and I attribute this um, success, and I'm afraid to say success, not to jinx it, to very simple, uh, but very, very uh, useful precaution steps. So first of all, we added space. So we separated um, the tables as such, so people have a lot of space in between, between those tables. And at the same time, close enough so they have social uh, aspect. They can talk, they can see each other, they can have these meals together. You can see on these pictures, we keep, uh, doors open the entrance and the backside doors so there's a close ventilation and we enhanced our air conditioner system and we put the highest level of air filters and that's another plus. Another COVID precaution technique is to do activities uh, again with the largest larger distances but at the same time have a smaller groups. On this picture, you could see that there is a small group of people sitting far from each other and doing exercises. And of course, again, doors are open and the cross ventilation um, changes air frequently, including air conditioning. There is another um, way of show how the treatments are provided. Also, you can see the, um, the, the, the treatment stations are really far one from another, same thing, outdoor airflow, cross ventilation, maximum air conditioning filtration. And of course, everyone you see uh, who is at the center wearing high quality masks. Also the COVID precaution require a uh, very deep cleaning. And you can see that uh, how we clean our surfaces, it's uh, kind of, easy and cool stuff to do. We all take turns because we all try to play with this equipment. We spray the um, surface and then surface dries out and that's it. <laughs> Though we are really sure that uh, infection is uh, not to be spread. So there's another picture of the meal, uh, of the meals serving. You can also see how people are far apart and um, Again, there's ventilation uh, and air filtration and outdoor, outdoor air to, to prevent uh, spread. Also, you can see um, places, outdoor seating meals. On your left is senior concerns. That, of course, their property is amazing with this courtyard. You can see how people are happy not wearing masks and enjoying each other's company outdoor. And uh, our center also has an outdoor uh, area where, where they have uh, room not to use masks. Many of them prefer have breakfast outside. So that's another 
way of um, protecting people from infection, just uh, having them more outdoor. Well, a uh, little bit about Oxnard Family Circle and what programs we do. We are safe, reliable, social, and fun place. Uh, dementia care unit, uh, we are the only place which has uh, from adult day health programs, but the health is a key word there, which has dementia care unit with wellness program. We offer veterans care. We also provide transportation. Uh, two hot meals we serve and we deliver together with dietitian services. We offer stimulating activities and fun trips, nursing care, social services, psychological counseling, physical, occupational, and speech therapy, and caregiver support group. And then this is a slide to highlight the senior concern social model program. Um, and these are some photos from our program. You can see we really try to use the outdoor space as much as possible. Um, the bottom picture is one of our exercise groups uh, using those beach balls as a little bit of a fun exercise prop. Um, and then the flowers that she's holding on the right, we have visiting um, the Thousand Oaks Garden Club comes once a month and helps everybody make their own flower arrangements. So we, we try to keep it really fun and interesting. We are, like I said, open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we're divided into two different rooms to allow the activities to be really planned based on the people that are there and what types they can enjoy and participate in comfortably. And we focus everything on either physical fitness, brain stimulation, or music and art therapy. Everything has a purpose even though it's just, you know, meant to be experienced as fun and, and social. And of course, we provide lunch and snacks. And we also have a, a caregiver support center on site. It's wonderful, um, just like with Oxnard Family Circle, that we can wrap around some other services. So we're not just there for the participant in the program, but we're there to support the family. And that's one thing I often tell people when they are enrolling it's a wonderful relief to know that you have another set of eyes on your loved one. Um, we see changes and we can report them back to you. I can't tell you how many times, and I'm sure Katie can, right. can agree, um, you know, that someone comes in suddenly and we tell the family something's going on, get them to a doctor, and they take them and it's a urinary tract infection. Exactly. <laughs> and they say, how did you know? And we're like, we just know we see your person almost every day. And, um, you know, this is what we do. So True. I think it feels really good for the family to know that they're not alone in it. Once you enroll in your program, we always say you're part of our family now. Um, and so that part, I think, is, is really a great benefit to be able to have some of those wraparound services for the family member as well. So, you know, I think way too few people know about the benefits of group adult day or adult day health care programs. So I just encourage everybody to help spread the word. Um, we know that most people that have dementia are in the community, not in institutions. And those numbers are growing every year. And people need a flexible and reliable solution. Um, I was just interviewed for a newspaper article about the shortage of caregiving staff. Correct. And that's a real problem for people who are trying to find care at home. And then when they finally find a good caregiver, maybe that caregiver takes a vacation or quits or gets another job. And now they have to start from square one. A program like this, even if one of our caregivers is out that day, we have a whole team. So you know that we'll be here for you every yes. day. Um, that's an incredibly valuable. Um, we're also one of the most affordable solutions. And I'm sure each of us have a little bit different pricing, but compared to paying privately for in-home care or paying for facility live-in care, um, this is definitely the most affordable option. Um, and it's safe. It's a safe environment with specially trained staff. We are all required to do a certain amount of trainings every year for our staff. 
Um, and then again, we also can teach the family members and work with them on how to effectively handle the behaviors they're seeing at home. For example, one of our clients was not eating very much, had lost a good amount of weight when she started our program, and her husband was very concerned. Um, well, after a few days, we said, I don't think that she can use the fork properly. I think that's what's happening. She was using the fork, so he didn't realize it was a problem, but hardly any food was getting in her mouth. So she knew to go through the motions, but she wasn't eating effectively. So we switched her meals and made it all food that could be handheld. Sandwiches, cheese sticks, things she could pick up. And then she started eating and cleaning her plate. So we were able to share that with the husband so he could adjust how he was serving her meals at home. And it, things like that make a huge difference. So our caregivers are no longer alone when they join a program like this. Um, like I said, it's not that well known in the community. So I'm really happy that we have the opportunity to share this today. Um, but we know that it can often delay placement because suddenly the family caregiver has that relief during the day, has that support. Um, it can reduce caregiver burnout and provide that affordable care option. And it can reduce depression and isolation in older adults. Um, we had somebody who had started here and was not very verbal anymore at home, maybe one or two word answers. And after a few weeks of coming here, he started talking in full sentences again, and he suddenly remembered where the mailbox was. He would naturally go over to the mailbox um, in their complex. And, you know, the wife was just amazed. And I said, you know, I, I don't want to give false hope, right? Like Katie said, we're not curing the diseases, but Sometimes what we're seeing is that there's compounded depression and isolation on top of the dementia. And so when we lift that and give the person something fun to do during the day, it can relieve some of those symptoms. Um, and we also know that these programs are most beneficial when they're joined together with the care management and, and wraparound services. And so that's what agencies like ours are really good at doing for families. So we want to thank you. I will stop the screen share and so that we can take any questions that people might have. Hi, this is Lynette. If you have any questions, if you want to go ahead and put it in the uh, Q&A at the bottom of the screen, that would be great. <clears throat> thank you so much for the presentation. It's very comprehensive and I thought there were some really great examples in there of the benefits really of adult day. Thank you. Yeah, when Martha and I were preparing for that, we couldn't stop telling stories to each other. And uh, that is amazing, amazing how much those programs affect people's lives. And as Martha uh, brought, brought up, amazing, amazing, heartwarming uh, stories about people, people's life changed. So, and uh, same thing we, we, we see here and we can't be more rewarded. If you feel so great when you hear these stories, when the loved one call and explain how much it means to them that they have uh, time for themselves and how much it means to them, like, in our story, once a husband came home, never touched his piano for 10 years after diagnosed with his um, brain uh, trauma after the stroke. And then he started playing back again. He didn't play as well as he used to, but the fact that he stimulation kind of prompted him to reach out to his piano, play again, and she was amazed. So all those, sto all those stories make it so, feels so great and so much worth it our effort everything we do here for caregivers and their loved ones i think one of the things that was really clear in your presentation is that uh it's worth the phone call it's worth uh talking about the needs of your loved one and seeing and asking the questions and and scheduling a tour so you can see 
um, you can see what's available. Okay, let's see. I think we have a question here. Um, question is, does Medicare cover adult day health care? The individual does not have Medi-Cal. Well, uh, to make it a short, no, but there is a longer answer. Often people don't realize that they could be eligible for Medi-Cal and we explain how to apply correctly. If the income is too high and the Medi-Cal is not really accepting the person uh, to cover the benefits, there are also some uh, Medicare Advantage plans that could cover some um, community-based services. Ventura County, unfortunately, not on the top of the list for Medicare Advantage plans, but it's coming there and it is worth exploring. So again, when people come and ask uh, social workers who are professionals and they know how to find the resources, we often, often can find at least something to help I can't uh, um, not to thank enough all the people who donate uh, to places like Camarilla Healthcare Center, to senior concerns, and to caregivers resource uh, centers who sometimes have grants to cover some services for the for the caregivers. Maybe not necessarily um, adult health or anything else, but at least some help is available for caregivers. Just come and see. There could be more uh, more resources available than just simple yes or no. Medical covers, so medical doesn't. In, again, medical has uh, another little loophole. Based on the income, medical may cover the adult health and would give a share of cost. And share of cost, it's a monthly payment that the family has to pay over the medical expenses. Okay, often. Those medical expenses are um, could be covered if a person goes to uh, adult day health. This share of cost could be wiped out pretty fast, and then the rest of the month that person comes to adult day health program, and that care would be covered fully. So to compare uh, how you would pay privately for many things. This way, you have at least some amount you pay out of pocket, and then the rest of the services are paid. And Medi-Cal also covers in-home support services, which the same thing, the share of cost could be applied toward either um, their services or anything else, like buying diapers or whatever, through Medi-Cal, it could be used over that share of cost to, toward the so-called deductible, monthly deductible, and the rest of the uh, services would be paid by Medi-Cal. It's also important vehicle to pay for the services uh, using Medi-Cal. Yeah, another, another reason why it's worth, uh, I think, exploring and kind of telling you guys the situation so that we can research if, if there is any support that can be given, such as from the VA or other things like that. Especially, also, mm -hmm. I was Go just going to say, um, a lot of people might not realize that the Medi-Cal asset limits are about to change drastically. Right. So some people that didn't qualify in the past are suddenly going to be able to qualify. So it's definitely worth um, reevaluating, like Katie said. Unfortunately, though, like the short answer is no. And it, I wish it was a covered benefit of Medicare because we see what amazing sort of preventative care it provides for the person and their family. Um, so let's hope in the future it is. Absolutely. Also, I would like to point something. Lynette from the Camarilla Health, very much involved in the master plan for aging. Master plan for aging has so many little things which could help a lot. So please reach out to Camarilla Health. And Lynette is on many boards and she knows so many things about these programs and Quite often, I, I just hope she could give an hour of training to all of us so we kind of ready for whatever the master plan for aging can bring to the community. Um, I hope one day <laughs> Lynette will teach all of us and everyone, uh, well, every resident in Ventura County how that work she does helps all of us. Thank you, Lynette. 
Well, oh, thank you. Well, we we definitely have some. Uh, we have a governor who does realize that there's an uh, aging population, so um, we are looking at changes and that we're going to continue to see, I think over the next few years. So um, let's keep our fingers crossed that maybe some Correct. of these things will end up either getting paid or subsidized um, in the future. I don't see any other questions at this point. I think if there aren't any other questions, we can uh, conclude the presentation. And if anybody thinks of a question um, beyond this seminar, you're welcome to reach out to um, to me or any of us and we can get those questions answered for you. So I'd, I'd like to thank you all for attending today. Uh, a recording of this seminar will be, be available on our website um, within uh, the next day or so. Um, our next schedule, our, our next seminar is scheduled for July 21st, and so we hope to see you all there. Remember, the new uh, time is from noon to 1 p.m. Um, and thank you so much again for for joining us today, and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for you having so us. much to our speakers. Thank you all very yes, much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.